all, you're running a trial for lithium in long COVID. Could you talk uh, about that trial and why you picked lithium? So, so as I was writing this book, <clears throat> The Promise of Lithium, you know, I was talking a lot about the Bermuda Triangle. I was mm -hmm. reviewing all of the mechanisms on how lithium works, um, which is a whole variety of different mechanisms. And one of them is that it um, is does have a kind of a unique anti-inflammatory action. It uh, suppresses the activation of, of the, this, uh, these immune cells that reside in the brain called microglia. And microglia are likely the main source of inflammation within the brain. Uh, it was a friend of mine whose son was suffering horribly with long COVID. Um, a whole variety of symptoms and wasn't finding any relief. And the uh, specialist that he had seen was actually getting worse. And it was a 17 year old guy who wasn't able to go to school anymore. And he was very disabled from these long COVID symptoms. Just, um, and it, and my friend asked, you know, do you, do you have any, any suggestions at all, you know, that you think would be reasonably safe that we could try? Cause we're not getting anywhere. And I had read that the leading theory of what was causing long COVID was chronic inflammation. There's a lot of different theories. Basically, we don't really know what's causing long COVID, mm -hmm. but uh, chronic inflammation is, is something that is kind of up, up to the top of the list of, of what is driving these long COVID symptoms in patients who had COVID months or years earlier. So I just told them, I go, you know, Lithium has anti-inflammatory actions. I really have no idea if this is going to help with your son. It's be safe to try. Um, so the son tried it and uh, he was, felt like his symptoms improved very quickly. And my, my friend was very happy about it. He was thanking me up and down. And so, you know, I took notice of that. I was really surprised. I didn't think it was going to do anything. I was shocked when my friend called me back to tell me that his son was doing so much better. So that got me down in an interest of long call. And uh, some colleagues here in Buffalo, um, you know, internal medicine specialists, they started referring some long COVID patients to me so I could get, you know, so just more experience with it. And so I've treated 11 patients with long COVID over this past spring and summer. And 10 of the 11 um, have... Uh, reported that they were pleased with the benefit, um, some more so than others. One of the 10, one of the 11 had absolutely no benefit at all from lithium. So it was encouraging. It was, it got me excited to um, do a randomized control trial to see if, you know, we could prove that lithium actually is effective. Um, you know, I'm, all we have are those anecdotal cases that I just told you about. That's not at all um, so data that qualifies as something that we should um, to guide medical practice. Um, so the, the study that we're doing right now is a randomized control trial. We're going to enroll 50 patients and randomly assign them to placebo or to lithium. And um, we're measuring a variety of different symptoms because we're still not quite sure what symptoms, what specific long COVID symptoms um, respond best to lithium, if at all. I mean, as I just want to be very clear, we're not at all sure that lithium is a, an effective treatment for long COVID. That's what we're trying to establish yep. in this study. Um, so um, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're hoping to have the study wrapped up by sometime in the spring or early summer and have be able to, you know, report the results, um, you know, soon thereafter. So the long COVID trial, what dose are you using in that? Yeah, so um, patients are starting at 10 milligrams a day. And uh, uh, if they feel like they need um, more benefit, they can go up to 15 milligrams a day. So we're all blinded so that they start at two pills a day. Each pill is five milligrams. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're on lithium or placebo, if they feel like they need to, they can go up to three pills a day. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we're, that's a because this is the very first randomized control trial using lithium. Um, they uh, we're going to see, you know, yeah. are the 
what percent of patients stayed at stated two or stated three to help design future studies. You know, if this study actually does show that um, lithium significantly improves symptoms, um, again, this is something that would need to be replicated. This would be the very first study. It's a pretty small study, only 50 patients just here at, you know, University of Buffalo. <clears throat> so it would be great to show this in a larger number of patients in a multi-centered study. Replication really uh, solidifies our belief in, in treatments. So does it matter during the day when you take it in the morning or, or would it have any impact on sleep? Have you seen that? So that's something we're looking at in our study because insomnia can be a problem in uh, mm -hmm. long COVID. So we are looking at uh, some sleep questionnaires. You know, lithium is the, the level of lithium after you take a dose orally, it's going to peak in the bloodstream about an hour and a half after you take it. So if you do have any side effects from lithium, you know, this is primarily when you take high dose lithium, mm -hmm. you're going to feel it about an hour and a half after. So in general, if patients are taking it twice a day, we give the bigger dose, you try and divvy it up and give, maybe give a third in the morning and two thirds at night. But uh, a lot of times you can just give the entire dose just at, at bedtime when you're using high dose lithium to minimize the side effects. Because you take it at bedtime, the main side effect of lithium often is sedation. And so if you get that while you're sleeping, um, it's not gonna cause any problems with your you know, daily activities. In our studies that we're doing in Parkinson's and now long COVID, we're using such low doses that um, most of the patients are taking it in the morning and nobody so far has reported any, any side effects from these low doses that we're using. So, uh, but it, it doesn't, in terms of benefit um, for whatever condition we're talking about, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, long COVID, it's a, it's a long acting therapy. So it doesn't really matter what time of day you take it. If you do, if your people are taking higher doses, we usually recommend for them to take it at bedtime to minimize the chances for side effects. So of the people, so you, you said you treated some 11 patients who were taking, who, who had long COVID and some of them saw improvements. How long did it take to see the improvements? Was it something very quick or did it take time? Yeah, surprisingly, oh. it's, uh, the benefit a lot of times happened pretty pretty fast, with sometimes a week, but uh, it seemed to be pretty quick, um, which, you know, gets you concerned for, you know, could this be a placebo effect? A lot of times you see a strong placebo effect early, early on after taking something. It's going to be very hard for us to determine, is this actually a treatment that um, is providing significant benefit. The only way to do that is with the study that we're doing right now, where everybody is blinded. You know, I don't know what the patients are getting. The patients don't know what they're receiving. Um, and they're randomly assigned to either lithium or placebo. Um, but at least what we saw anecdotally, um, patients were reporting improvements in their symptoms fairly quickly. Okay, interesting. Kind of to wrap up, so what mm -hmm. do you see as like the next steps with lithium, uh, especially in terms of AD and PD? You, you, are, you have some funding for another trial, which is, or to extend your existing trial, which is really great to see. Kind of what else is there moving forward or is there anything that we can do? Well, um, there are, <laughs> that's it. The Alzheimer's and Parkinson's would be a great start. If we could show that lithium is... Uh, an effective way to slow these diseases down. Boy, that would be of huge benefit to patients and public health in general. These are huge problems facing us now and in the future with the aging of, of the population. Um, could really just decimate the finances of our healthcare systems, not to mention patients' lives and um, the caregivers' lives. So that would be fantastic. But in terms of like other applications, I think that's what you're hinting at. Could lithium potentially be effective for other conditions uh yeah but but also like how to move it forward within the adpd area right the more research the better like we talked about earlier the more that we see um findings replicated the more the general medical community across the world will be confident that this is truly um effective reliable and not a fluke 
Um, you also need to know what we talked about earlier, long-term safety um, and at what dose. And so, you know, the, we can do that in studies, but another way to do that is in clinical practice to follow patients who are taking whatever dose seems to be the best dose to use in AD or PD and follow them long-term to establish, you know, are these safe? Do they develop side effects later on? Or are, do, even at the very low doses, are there changes in kidney function or changes in thyroid function or other organ systems? You know, the longer, some even FDA approved therapies that are felt to be, you know, safe and effective, sometimes we're surprised in clinical use over time, we find, wow, um, we're, we're seeing some toxicity after patients are on these therapies for years. Um, so yes, we need more research. We need more trials to try and replicate what has been done so far. Yeah. So in the AD and PD world, I'd say that's, that's really what the main things that need to be done. Another thing is to try and figure out a best salt carrier, you know, are, are there certain formulations of lithium that seem to work better? That type of work would probably be initially, um, explored in uh, in the laboratory um, using different uh, kind of efficacy models. Uh, so that's something else that I think would be interesting to work out. There's a variety of other uh, conditions where lithium potentially could have a role. And really, I mean, anything where chronic inflammation is, is implicated. So a variety of different autoimmune diseases, where lithium might have a role. But there's really not much data on that at all at this point. So the, those would be kind of brand new future future trials. Yeah, so I think lithium does have um, some great, you know, promise and potential. Would you be willing to share your health protocol? So what, what do you do to keep yourself fit and healthy? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, for me, I'm, I just... I know that it's real important for, for health to get some form of exercise every day. Mm. But for me, it's something I just absolutely need to do. Um, I, it makes my day so much brighter if I can get some exercise. So I'll do all sorts. I, I like to do all sorts of different types of exercise to mix it up. I like to skateboard on a hill that we have on our street. That's <laughs> a great way for me to get a good workout. I like to do these kite surfing, wing surfing, surfing, oh. if I can, is in Buffalo, we're on Lake Erie and we can get some very good wind and good waves mm -hmm. here. Oh. It's a little chilly this time of year. But, I was going to uh, say, yeah. <laughs> those of us that are still going out there with dry suits, as long as the lake oh. doesn't freeze. <laughs> um, wow. And then, you know, just uh, when the weather's bad, um, uh, do Nordic track or elliptical, cross country skiing, downhill mm -hmm. skiing. I, I try to get something in every every right. day um, for my physical and mental health. You know, and then <clears throat> about uh, three years ago, I did go to um, mostly a vegan diet, and I found that I feel a lot better cutting out meat. Mm -hmm. And so that was actually a little tough for me because I was a complete carnivore before then, but. Uh, <laughs> For a variety of reasons, I wanted to try the vegan diet, and for me, I I like it. Um, so I, I stick with that. Um, I do eat fish. So I mean, for me personally, that's kind of my re my recipe mm -hmm. for staying healthy. Excellent. That sounds sounds good. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like you might be getting some cold therapy in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of bit of kind of Wim Hof. <laughs> so. Uh, where can people go to find out more about your work and to get the book? And also you have a web page for the book as well. Right. So yeah, the website is promiseoflithium.com. Um, you can read a little bit about the book. We also set up a, a Facebook page. I guess if you just go to Facebook and you type in promise of lithium, you'll see that I'm going to update. Um, there's already been an update to the book since it's been published, because uh, uh, at least in the US, the FDA has now approved two therapies for Alzheimer's disease. 
Um, so things are moving quickly and to educate people on, on um, what to, you know, how to position these, these, these treatments. Um, so yeah, there's a Facebook page, there's a website. Oh yeah. Prom the, the book you can purchase on Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, Barnes and Nobles has it. It's on a bunch of different online, um, sites. So yeah, that's, that's the way to get the book. It's okay. It's uh, it's an excellent book. Yeah, really enjoyed reading it. It's very readable, and uh, it's it's amazing how much data there is, human data, because we're so used, uh, especially in the longevity space, to having mouse data. Everything is mouse data, if you're mm -hmm. lucky. Otherwise, it's like fly, <laughs> flies and worms. So, <laughs> like ha having human data is is so good. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's good for humans. I yeah, had, I had a patient tell me that he he, he wished he was a rat because <laughs> he showed me these studies on how this treatment worked in rats for Parkinson's. He goes, oh, "That's the first time in my life I wish I was a rat." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. It was uh, great talking to you, and um, yeah, I definitely will be following all you're doing and watching the trials. So you said there was an update to the book. Is that on your website? It's, um, is it on the website? Uh, it might not be on the website. I think it, it's on the Facebook page. There's a, a post that describes these two new therapies that were approved in the United States. They received like an mm. accelerated approval and it was mm. based on biomarker data in Alzheimer's. The first approval was highly controversial. The second approval just mm. happened a few weeks ago. Mm. So um, yeah, there's some new information for patients with Alzheimer's that yeah. they can uh, they can read about there on the Facebook page, and it's on you know it's obviously online quite a bit. These two new therapy infusion yeah. therapies. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll let you know when we start posting. Sounds good, Richard. Thanks. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you. You too. Yeah. Bye.